to measure, Trini Woodrow. Comedy treasure, Reese Shearsmith. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, fresh from the West End, Michael Ball. TV's his best friend, Charlie Brooker. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And your host, Rob Brydon. Good evening, and welcome along to Would I Lie to You, the show all about lies and lying. Now, according to research, the most common lies are about affairs and money. So, men, if you do spend the night with another woman, don't make things worse by lying to your wife about how much she cost. <laughs> When you give someone a fake smile, you don't use the same set of muscles as when you smile at them genuinely. It's easy to tell the difference. A genuine smile is the one you get from your dear old mum as you walk up the path to the care home on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> a fake smile is the one you give her back. <laughs> and so, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists take it in turns to read out a statement from the card in front of them, and to make it particularly difficult, they haven't seen the card yet, so they don't know if it contains a truth or a terrible, terrible lie that we've made up for them. Michael Ball is first up. Oh, Michael, great. what would you like to tell us? Thank you. I have a three-part ritual I have to adhere to before I go on stage. David's team, how uh, true is this? Okay, what, what are the three parts? Firstly, I, there's a sweet that I have to have before um, uh, I feel comfortable. A sweet. A sweet. Uh, part two. Part two is. Uh, I may have to hurry. Is, <laughs> having to, is putting on a spray. Is, is spraying me with. Uh, so I smell Insecticide. nice. Insecticide. I smell yes. nice for the ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. what, what, spray. what spray? What spray? Uh, yeah. Madame Rocha. Ma because Madame... I'm playing, I'm in hairspray, and she's a woman, and okay. so I put So it's a recent in. thing, since you were in hairspray? Uh, it, it depends. Uh, uh, yeah. It's theme. A different smell for every right. thing so I do. What did, you... You, what did you do when you were in Cats? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I didn't do Cats. What's the third part? And the third part. Tapping. <laughs> tapping. 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 What do you tap? Tapping. Um, parts of my body. <laughs> I don't think he's really uh, Can you demonstrate? Yes. Uh, you go there, and yep. then you go there, and your hands. Right. Tapping your hands. Yeah. Well, there we are. There are lots of people around the country, just like Michael, who need your help. Please send <laughs> whatever you can. Uh, David's team, what do you think? Uh, this thing about tapping, I, I know about tapping, and you started doing it correctly, and then you stopped, because I thought, are you giving too much away if you continue tapping correctly? You didn't even do this. This is where doctors do it. It's probably not. Never if you have a lung disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, he's, he, he's never claimed to be a doctor, I think. <laughs> well, there was the once, but... Uh, <laughs> that was to get you to the next yeah, stage, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they cut a few for every character you play in musicals. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, but it could That's be... That's what you're saying! Sort of no, I said for this character. Yeah, you're yeah Madame Rorschach, whatever you call yourself. Is it real? Yeah, but it's not one you'd associate with hairspray. I'd associate Charlie or something with hairspray. He does know the dressing room as well. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the old days. <laughs> yeah. so I, my feeling is that it's a lie at the moment. I, I, I think. think he's telling the truth. You, so you're drifting, when you're drifting on the towards fingers, a lie. It was too vague. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, well, it's two one. We reckon it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Yeah. Okay, Michael. What is the answer? It is in fact the truth. Ah. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yes, it's true. Michael does have a three-part ritual that he has to carry out before going on stage. Lots of stars have little rituals. Amy Winehouse always has a small glass of dry white wine. <laughs> and a large glass of brandy. And then a litre and a half of meths. <laughs> Trini, you're next. Oh, okay. Marks and Spencer's mannequins are based on my body. Just, not, just the female one. I was going to say, not the male. <laughs> <female. laughs> Surely. How did this work? Was it, did you have a mould of your body? What you do is you do a... Um, like a plaster of Paris on your body. Hang on, say this really slowly. <laughs> a man takes this gunk oh. and he... <laughs> <laughs> what, why did they want you? Because hey. I used to model. Is it the head as well or just the body? No, they, the body, but the... Yeah. They didn't bother doing your head? No, they did my head, but it was... So they basically decided that you'd be the right body to advertise, but they went, 
We don't want the face, love. We know what you're talking about. Was that... Well, did you look different, like, when you were a model? Were you... Or were they going, uh, we'll go with the body, love. What's wrong with the face? <laughs> I had acne, actually. I had very bad acne. Well, oh. they could have sanded it down. <laughs> <laughs> not, not you. The, the model. I mean the model. They cast the face and then they get a bit of light, grade two, just shave off the acne. <laughs> Does it hurt when they peel it off? Is it like... You know, when you pull a plaster off quickly, is it Before like they put on the plaster of Paris, you're wrapped in saran wrap. But then you'd get all the... the you'd get the, the, the lumps, wouldn't you? No, you the don't. Saran... I tell you, I've <laughs> had it done you a do, few you times. Do, you do. You, you, well, you think about it. I had it for a, a, a show I was in called The Woman in White. And it would all buckle, and, and then if you pour something in on that, you'd get all the, the lines on it. I'd have thought. Well, you could just sand it off, like the acne. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, what do you think? All right. Why I don't think it's true is that surely mannequins come in different sizes, because otherwise... No. No? No, clothes come in different sizes. <laughs> <laughs> and they put the right size on the mannequin to make them look the, as attractive as they possibly can. I love boys discussing fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you got... Oh, I got Charlie's You off. got cast before, didn't you? you? You were cast for a big set of fake breasts for a show, weren't you? No. <laughs> that wasn't me. She was talking... He was talking to David. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sure you got fitted for a prosthetic set of breasts for In a show. In fantasy, darling. God, did, maybe, well, because, did I because, dream that? Because... For, if, 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 if <laughs> we think that that's a lie. OK. Is it fact or fiction? <laughs> You've got the, you've got the experience. It is a lie. Marks and Spencer mannequins are not based on Trini's body. Um, but it's true, isn't it, that Susanna did provide the inspiration for their large sacks of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, your turn to confess. For a summer, I worked at a funeral directors that offered themed funerals. What's a <clears throat> themed funeral? Give, give us an example of a theme. Well, you can have um, a medieval one. How does a medieval <laughs> funeral work? You have it when you're 26. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, there was a king and queen. Right. Obviously. <laughs> who, who were the king and queen? The, the sort the, of the, the departed person. The nearest people to the person who's died. <laughs> they dress up. Yes, yes, they oh. dress up. Oh, I see. So it's not just the dead person. Everyone's got to be no, into the no, no, no. So the people who are alive are dressed up and the what? dead person's dead. He doesn't know. Well, he's he's alive. Alive. <laughs> You're too upset. We've had medieval. Medieval. Could you give me three others? There was, um, a Valentine's Day massacre one. Oh, God! Oh, no. 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 What did that actually, tell us, that? actually called Valentine's Day massacre. <laughs> it's called the Blue Parrot. What? It was, well, the Blue Parrot is the name of the uh, supposed club that the, hit the all the, the <laughs> them, people... They all believe in it now, look at that. <laughs> the St Valentine's Day Massacre yeah. was, an, a, was a, an atrocity. Yeah. Why a Did funeral you is depressing enough? Why would you want to make it more depressing? It's not me personally, it was on the list. <laughs> it, what, what, what was beyond the pale? Like, if I came and said I want a cannibal-themed funeral... <laughs> there was one who came and wanted all the people to be serial killers. But dress is different. I just realised you yeah. said cannon. Yeah. I genuinely yeah. thought you said cannon and ball <laughs> thing. What are you talking about? He's dead. <laughs> he is dead. Did you ever get a point where there was like another regular funeral going on at the same time, and maybe they were slightly upset to look over and see people in zany it's a knockout costumes burning <laughs> a corpse into the ground? They were, it was only ever crematorium. It wasn't ever burials, so it was quite private. What if they said, before the crematorium, um, he was a big fan of bonfire night, can you stuff it with fireworks, Catherine wheels, the lot, and then when it goes behind the curtain... <laughs> pin the coffin to a wall and watch it spin round as a flame spinner. So, Lee, what, what are you saying? Do you What's know the what? decision? I'm, I am so, I'm getting genuinely annoyed by this, because I know we've got to say it's a lie. Because if we say true and it's a lie, we everyone look. at home is going to be going, what? how could that yeah. possibly be true? <laughs> and yet there's a massive voice in my head going, saying this true. is... No, exactly what you're saying. Really? Yeah, yeah there is. I just... The St Valentine's Day... <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds ludicrous. Lee Mack, make a decision. But what is it? Say common it's a, sense. Yeah, it's a lie. Let's not look stupid. All right, go on. We'll say it's a lie. <laughs> Saying it's a lie. Okay, Reese. fact or fiction? It is... 
lie. It is indeed a lie. Uh, Reese didn't used to work at a funeral director's that offered themed funerals. Uh, actually, I plan to put my ashes while still hot in one of those council wheelie bins. That'll show them. <laughs> Charlie Brooker, you're up next. For six years, I pretended to a girlfriend that I was partially deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Seems reasonable enough. Um, <laughs> David's team, what do you think? After how many years of going out with her did this start? Um, shamefully quickly. <laughs> was by pretending to be partially deaf how you clinched the deal early on? <laughs> Are you saying I have to use pity <laughs> to attract people? I'm saying you might have used pity. <laughs> well, I'm not above it. it. <laughs> Did she have a very irritating habit that precipitated your going deaf? Yes, talking. <laughs> um, she was talking about something that was very important, some emotional thing. Right. And um, she said, you weren't listening to me, and got very upset, started crying, and so I thought, I'll lie <laughs> and tell her I'm deaf in one ear. Which so, I did. So and, I... At, and at that point, what you're saying to her is, I, I didn't hear anything because I'm deaf in one ear. I thought we were sitting together in silence. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I thought was happening. No, I, I had my attention taken up with something else, and I, I, I said it what apologetically. Was that? Stroking his guide dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he called it, don't you? <laughs> Did you elaborate what? on why you were deaf in the ear after you had yeah. to go like, what, what, um, was your, what was your reason? I said that when I was a child, I had nearly drowned when I was like four in a swimming pool and this had left me deaf in one ear. I, I clearly don't try shaking my head. And yeah. I felt quite bad because I, I told the lie early on and then I had to maintain it. So did you tell her ever after the six years? Well, did the relationship just break up and you never told her? I never told her. Right. I, t I didn't tell her. I told... I, I wrote about it in a newspaper oh. column. That's nice. Oh, she's it. a Geordie, they're robust. <laughs> so, oh. she, to be fair, that, now that adds credence to the fact he didn't want to hear her, so... <laughs> I'm just trying to put myself in the position of that woman. Sure Six years! Bad, You've lied. You've lied to me. Oh, a big lie. It's quite a big lie. You'd be surprised how often it doesn't come up. Now that, now that's, a, that's a big lie. <laughs> And the advantage is, after telling that lie, half the time it comes up, <laughs> you can pretend you haven't heard. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? So you think it's... A, a lie. You think it's a lie? Horrifically, I think it's true. I think it might be true. You think it's true? Charlie, is it truth or lie? <sighs> it's, uh, it's true. Everything, everything that you just told us is true. Yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid it is. And it was terrible. It was such a burden. <laughs> oh, poor you! <laughs> we, well, the first time I in introduced her to my parents, we're going down to meet them on the train. I suddenly thought, oh, God, she's going to mention the... And so I had to turn around to her and say, don't bring it up, my mother blames herself. And... <laughs> I didn't want to lose her. I was desperate. Having told this terrible lie, I was locked into it. I couldn't... I didn't tell her I was going to... Can't you see? The back? Don't you find that moving? You, cold-hearted monster! I'm not having this! <laughs> you can't call us cold-hearted. You do the... You're, you've People lived for six years... People make mistakes, David! <laughs> yes, and for which they must be punished! <laughs> Oh, yes, it's, uh, it's amazingly true. Uh, Charlie did pretend to a girlfriend for six cruel years <laughs> that he was partially deaf. Uh, ironically, like all his other girlfriends, she was partially sighted. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth. I'll be offering the team some bizarre celebrity facts, but are they true or did we get them from Wikipedia? Lee's team, take a look at this clip. Um, we do a bigger one for the trucker, for the actual, the really hungry person, which consists of a St. Kidney pie, beans, tomatoes, chips, mushrooms, fried potatoes, two thick bread and butter, and it comes up really heaped well up on a plate. Egg and chips, bacon and chips, sausage and chips, corned beef and chips, egg, bacon and chips, everything what goes with chips. <laughs> 
I uh, should say what they didn't show you there was the toilet where Gillian McKeith was spending one of the happiest days of her life. <laughs> so here's the uh, related fact, right, for Lee's team. Christina Aguilera once followed a strict diet where every meal had four food items. One crunchy, one soft, one hot and one cold. Lee's team, could that be true? That's not very specific, is it? There are more specifics. They had to be bold, coloured, you know. Example meal, right? Raw red pepper, which would be red and cold. Steamed broccoli, which would count for green and hot. Scrambled eggs, yellow and hot. And raw carrot sticks, which, as we all know, are orange and cold. They're not cold, they're crunchy. That's two crunchy pepper's things. Crunchy. The pepper's no. cold. Cold as well, unless you've heated them up. Yes, I, I know, but, so... but, but, it, but <laughs> the system is one crunchy, one soft, one hot, one cold. So don't, don't start talking about something that might coincidentally be cold and crunchy. Yeah. That's just confusing. Its selling point was its crunchiness, I'll give you that. In, 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 this, instance, in this instance, the carrots there playing the crunchy the role. The crunchy role. And could say to the pepper, oh, actually, I've, I've done cold as well, but yeah. today I'm, I'm on crunchy. All oh, right, I've been crunchy, but today I'm cold. You know. <laughs> so any, but any food can be served in all of those ways. You're quite right. No, a grape cannot be crunchy, you idiot. <laughs> have you ever eaten the carrots? Don't talk to Michael Ball yeah. like that. Yeah. He was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. What have you ever done? What if you froze a grape? Hey, listen, I sat through him in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> I know worked harder. It's all right, I've an Olivier it's... Award. <laughs> Please, team. I think it's true, because that's the sort of stupid thing that people like her do to give their life some purpose and meaning <laughs> is come up with a set of arbitrary rules, something for them to think about while they're sitting on their thin asses. <laughs> Okay, I think it's I think it's true. I'll go on, I'll go with my team on this one and say that that's the truth. You're saying it's true. Okay. Uh, it's it is true. Oh, oh. True, Christina will go to any lengths to maintain that slightly slutty look we've all come to know and love. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, um, Lee's team is in the lead by four points to two. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My. We're about to bring on a mystery guest that each of Lee's team will claim to have a special relationship with, but only one of them will be telling the truth, and it's up to David's team to decide who. So, please, welcome this week's special guest... Donna. So, Charlie first, uh, what is Donna to you? Uh, this is Donna, who's teaching me basic home maintenance. All right, uh, Lee, what, what, what is Donna to you? This is Donna, and she saved my life when she threw me a life belt after I fell off my boat. <laughs> Okay, uh, Michael, what is Donna to you? Uh, this is Donna. She uh, has been my number one super fan since she was 17. Uh, she even has a toilet seat cover with my face on it. <laughs> Michael has a fan. <laughs> David's team, who would you like to start with? Michael, when did you start your relationship with your fan? Uh, I, I have a relationship with, with most of my fans. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get to know? Uh, Donna. Yeah. I, I've uh, seen her at the uh, front of crowds House. of audiences yeah. that have come and waited at stage doors and you sign autographs and you stop and you have a so chat. Some, and some shows only Donna turns only up. Only Donna is there. <laughs> <laughs> so what makes Donna your number one fan? Well, a number of things. I released a, a, a charity single and so she went and bought them all in a shop and then sold them on at her school. Isn't that illegal? <laughs> Uh, open air concerts. She'll she'll always try and be the first down the front. So she'll go into training prior to uh, <laughs> the gig, so that she can get there first. Do you have like a number two fan and a number three fan? Well, it's it's um, no, no. <laughs> everyone's number one. <laughs> um, Charlie, what sort of home maintenance tips are you being given? Very very basic ones. My home's a mess, and I'm not very good at sort of maintaining you know, looking after anything in my house. So an ex-girlfriend um, paid for me to have these uh, lessons where I basically learned, it's, it's basic stuff. Do you mean like how to change a plug? Yes, well, it, it's, yes, that was one of the first things we did. Right. I've, I've only, to be honest, I've only gone three times and I... I where where I, do you go? Where did you go? Gone where? Yeah. It's, it's just a community centre down the road. And Are you doing it for a magazine article? No. 
No, I'm doing it because I'm a pathetic human being. <laughs> Charlie, what is the first rule of Home Maintenance Club? <laughs> you don't talk about Home Maintenance Club. <laughs> Lead. Uh, yeah. Tell us the story of the, your boating trip. <laughs> where, where was the boat? The boat was on the River Thames. Were you by yourself? Uh, well, I was actually with my dog and one other person. Uh, <laughs> Why does the dog come first? <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Why does the dog so... come first? That's exactly what my wife says. Right. <laughs> Why do you introduce me like that all the time? Like, <laughs> this is my dog Pickles and one other and person. One other person. <laughs> Who was the other person? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> How fast a boat is this? I'm not a boat well, expert. Well, it's a, a twin-engine, 28-foot Furline Sun Fury, and as we all know, they can go up to 45 knots, but on the Thames, as we all know, you can't break six knots. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of how fast six knots is, if someone is walking beside you <laughs> and you wave to them, you're committed to it for about two hours. <laughs> right. And, um, how did you fall in? Well, I was, I, was, I was actually trying to uh, go round the, the side of the boat to, to undo the gas canister at the front so we could make a cup of tea. And I, I went down the side and slipped. Why didn't your wife try to save you? Yeah. She can't swim. And what's Donna got to do with it? She hasn't appeared yet in this story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Donna was on another boat coming the other way and I slipped in and then she just threw me the ring. And she did so what? your wife, because she can't swim, also won't throw you a life <laughs> So what do you say? Well, what, what is she? Trini. I think when Donna came in, the only person who didn't look at her was the guy in the middle. <laughs> his name is... I'm his name is Lee, Lee Mac... Yeah. Uh, Trini! He's a, he's a popular Trini, comedian. Will you stop treating me like staff? No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I can't side through Michael and Lee. I don't believe Lee would go boating very much. And... <laughs> Why wouldn't I go boating very much? Um... Just doesn't well, suit you. Why? <laughs> All right, then she saved me when I was trying to chase after a whippet. <laughs> <laughs> Rhys, do you have any, uh, any suspicions which way this should go? I think um, that Lee is telling the truth. You think Lee? Yeah. OK, okay but let's your go answer? with Lee. OK, Donna, would you reveal your true identity? I'm Michael's number one fan. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Yes! Um, look at this. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> we say congratulations to Donna and thank you very much indeed for coming, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Which uh, brings us to our final round, quick fire lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Uh, David's team are currently behind, so we're going to give them one last chance to catch up, starting with... That's David. Three members of the Cabinet subscribe to my Twitter feed. Please explain for, for some of the less with it crowd <laughs> what a Twitter is. Well, it's a, Twitter is a website where you can essentially leave messages of up to 140 characters. All right. Okay. Um, and no longer. OK. Uh, Lee's team. You made it sound so dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why it's so popular. I can't. Why did you sign up? Because someone on it was impersonating me. What? Someone on Twitter was pretending to be me and putting messages on it like going to peep show production meeting, everyone there is an asshole. <laughs> which I did not wish to be published under my name. And who are, the, who are the cabinet ministers? They are uh, Andy Burnham, the really? culture secretary, Alistair Darling, who is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> Can you say Exchequer like that again? The Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> and Alan Johnson. If this is true, is it any wonder the financial crisis we're in? <laughs> How many followers do you have? About 27,000. What sort of information would you be giving that's so interesting that they're going to sign up to follow you, of all the people in the country? I think you, you can follow more... Like that sounded really confrontational. You really are following <laughs> <laughs> <You really are. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> a very popular young man in the current entertainment scene. And 
a lot of people enjoy his work and they want to get close to him and they follow him. He's been on Question I Time. He's been on I'm, Question Time, I'm a major time, political Charlie. force, Charlie. <laughs> He's, oh, wait, oh. wait, let's have a guess. It's a lie. I, th That's I think a it could be true, actually. I think it could be true. It's a lie. lie. It's a lie. If anybody is talking through the internet to cabinet members, it's Dave Mitchell. He's not talking. He never. I'm on there. He never. Like, he doesn't really say much. You, frankly, you're boring on there. <laughs> I think it might be true. Are you but, saying true? I, I, you can say that if you want to lose the game. <laughs> okay. It's, <laughs> it's a lie. Okay. You no, think it's I a think lie, it's a lie. Charlie, it must be a lie. I don't know anything. Absolutely convinced it's a lie. It's I true. think it's true, and I'm I'm going to go with you, you two, but particularly you, if it right. goes wrong. Oh, I'm okay. You're saying it's a lie, David. Is it true? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it is a lie. A very big lie. Uh, there are not three members of the Cabinet who subscribe to David's Twitter feed. I, myself, don't get all the fuss about Twitter. I think people have forgotten the simple pleasure of just sitting down and talking to friends on Skype. <laughs> and next. <coughs> it's uh, Lee. <clears throat> I kept my car running for t two months by cracking an egg into it every day. David's team, is that possible? When you say cracking eggs into it, where do you mean in? In the petrol tank or in the... Oh, in the petrol tank. Are you a fool? Do you know nothing of cars? No, not, it's... Egg, not egg running cars. Well, <laughs> if you, in a car you have um, a radiator. If the, if the radiator cracks, all the water comes out. Yeah. But, interestingly, if you put an egg in the radiator, it, it goes, it congeals. And it seals the hole in the radiator because the, the egg cooks and... So why didn't you go and get it fixed? Well, that's a good question. See, Trini, I couldn't afford it. So I thought, it's about 100, 150 quid to get the radiator replaced now. It was my first car. So the eggs it, must have cost what? you 100 quid. No, no, they weren't free range, darling. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking really so cruel you did, eggs. So did you do an egg a day? Cruel and cheap, they used to be called. Did you do an egg a day? <laughs> I can pump out 50 a day, was the advert. <laughs> Who needs to move his head? That's where the other <laughs> Who needs to move his head? 50 a day, that's me. So what do you think? Is it true or is it a lie? Can't be true. What do you think? I think it's a lie. Oh, okay, David. lie. You're saying it's a lie? Uh, Lee, tell us the truth. It is, in fact. True. Ah. Well done. Oh, yes. Very good. Okay. It's, uh, it's very true indeed. Lee Max motto is if there's a job worth doing, it's worth doing haphazardly with some farm produce. <laughs> oh. And that noise uh, signals time's up, and it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that. Tonight's winners are Lee's team by a massive nine points to two. It's not just a team game anymore. My individual liar of the week is Michael Ball. Oh, that's very funny. Yes. Michael Ball, whose uh, biggest lie prior to tonight was love changes everything. I, I can tell you from experience, Michael, that what actually changes everything is having your girlfriend come home to find you prancing around the bedroom in her underwear. <laughs> Good night. Stay in step with Strictly from your mobile. Get the very latest news, scores and dances wherever you are. Just go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Strictly from your mobile. Oh, and bookmark it. Thank you. Coming to BBC One with his fabulous new show, Graham Norton, next Monday at 10.35.